America wants more students from China to study the humanities and not science and physics. Is this a good idea? You know, I came to America to be a data scientist, but when I got here, they automatically enrolled me in performing arts and gender studies. What's going on? Let's run the clip. U.S. to restrict Chinese students in STEM fields. So the U.S. Deputy Secretary of State, Kirk Campbell, recently announced that U.S. universities will be restricting Chinese international students access to STEM fields involving sensitive technology, like particle physics, due to security concerns. While Chinese students are still welcome, he urged them to pursue arts instead of STEM courses. He was quoted saying, I would like to see more Chinese students coming to the United States to study humanities and social sciences and not particle physics. Currently, Chinese students form the largest group of international students in the U.S., with nearly 290,000 students enrolled in the 2022 to 2023 academic year. While Campbell's comments come amid deteriorating U.S. and China relations, particularly in technology, critics of Campbell argue that these strained relations and concerns over intellectual property theft have hindered scientific cooperation and unfairly targeted Chinese students. I would like to see more Chinese students that are coming to the United States to study the humanities and social sciences, not particle physics. If Chinese students okay. want to come here and study Shakespeare and the Federalist Papers, that's what they need to learn from America. They don't need to learn quantum computing and artificial intelligence. Even though Russia and China are working very closely together in Ukraine, and I, I would argue that it is a deep strategic partnership, one which we have historically gotten wrong on both sides. And it is undeniably a defining feature in global politics today. But there are tensions. There are tensions in the Arctic. There are tensions in the stands, the countries that have traditionally been closer to Russia, but increasingly economically, commercially attracted to China. And now we're seeing them on North Korea. And I think it would be fair to say that China is probably worried that North Korea will be somehow encouraged to take provocative steps that could lead to a crisis in Northeast Asia. Boom! There it is, Andrew. That Whoa. is a quote from Kurt Campbell. I would like to see more Chinese students coming to the United States to study humanities and social sciences, not particle physics. However, he did say that since American kids no longer like STEM subjects, they would make it up with more Indians. Ah, so he wants more Indian scientists coming over instead of Chinese scientists and I believe his main concern is the security concern, right? Of, well, there have been a few cases in the past where Chinese students have shared information, but most Chinese students are not, this is not an issue for any of them. However, the security concern of sharing information and spying and all that stuff, right? Right, right, right. Andrew, he is the deputy security of state. He also bears a striking resemblance to Robin Leach from Lifestyles of the Rich and the Famous. Um, I'll say this, man. 35% uh, of the U.S. international students right now are Chinese. However, just this year, Indian graduate students overtook the volume of Chinese graduate students. Obviously, post-COVID, since 2019, there's been a $2 billion decline in international student tuitions to America. Obviously, uh, for security reasons. Right. But, but, but it's not just security reasons, Andrew, of the U.S. being concerned about Chinese graduate students. Chinese graduate students also got murdered a lot randomly in acts of street violence. So some of them are opting to go to Australia. Ah, got it, got it. So there's a lot of reasons why a lot of Chinese students would not want to come to America right now. Although America still is considered the best country to go to, right? But there are many, many reasons. So we're going to go through the reasons. We're going to go through the online discussion and then actually give you our takeaways and conclusions at the end. So please hit that like button. Check out other episodes of the Hot Pop Boys. And if this type of topic really interests you, make sure to give us a super thanks. And also check out Small House Sauce at smallhousesauce.com, guys. Uh, obviously, point number one, Andrew, some people feel like China is a rival country right now. So why are we educating the enemy? Yeah, well, obviously, these grad students or undergrad students are not the enemy. There are, obviously, China as a country and its military is definitely a rival to America. So I'm not tr trying to gloss over that. But these are students. Most, like, 99.99999% of them are innocent students. Well, not only that, Andrew, a lot of them are going to go on to become Americans. So if you stop them from studying it, how can they contribute to American companies if they're not even allowed to get science degrees right. and they got to study gender studies, what is the point of giving 
a Chinese person a degree right. in gender studies for 75K exactly. a year. And, and I do want to go over the main concerns of there have been a case of like like one Chinese professor or a couple Chinese students getting co-opted by someone from the CCP to bribe them to share some information. That that has happened. Obviously, some people have been wrongly accused too and their lives have been changed forever. But I'm just saying, and I'm not to say, I'm not trying to downplay that, but that's the worst it got was sharing information. Right. Uh, I would say that, Probably a more compromised approach is like just putting higher due diligence standards or thresholds on Chinese students studying particle physics. Right. That totally makes sense. But to completely ban them because of their ethnicity or country of origin, it actually is borderline racist. Mm. Um, by the way, guys, in the past 10 to 20 years, in terms of STEM contributions, Chinese students had the biggest arguably amongst any contribution in the entire university system. Right, right, right. Point number two, Andrew, um, a lot of people are saying, well, if you ban them from studying STEM subjects, they just won't come because no Chinese parents are trying to pay 75K a year, room and board, plus tuition, full cash to have them study humanities. Oh yeah, and not just, these are not only like rich Chinese kids who have everything paid for. A lot of them are students who are just studied their way into this, guys like, uh, not every, like, especially the Chinese grad students, they're not always the ones that come from families with money. Right. Like, they're going to have to work it off anyways. You know For example, saying? Andrew, underneath this new uh, encouragement, obviously, he doesn't control everything from Kurt Campbell. This our, isn't a law yet. Our, our own father would not have been allowed to come to America. Exactly, exactly. Because he would have been viewed as, what, like, they would have made him study performing arts. Um <laughs> I'll say this, to be fair, one point that I'll give Kurt Campbell is that probably just in general, China could use more humanity studies, maybe a little bit, I guess. Like You mean for but, their own good? Yeah, just for their own good, because it's like a very accomplishment, hyper STEM, hyper wealth centric achievement in STEM fields oriented place. Humanities couldn't hurt, but to force a certain race to study humanities, that does seem like completely unfair yeah, and also that's just not going to work obviously you're not going to change their i guess what to me they were saying was like we're only we only want to accept students who are already studying the humanities and want to study the humanities uh this comment came from a white person saying well you know chinese are just more suitable to maths and physics it fits their character better they do it better they prefer it they're able to spend more time on it of course you know that's just is what it is why don't we just let people be good at what they're good at Mm, yeah. yeah, boy, I guess it goes back to the security concern, right? Because they're like, they're getting too good at it. They're getting to get so good at it. They're going to take it back to where they come from. And their country going to get all strong and we're going to get all weak. So ban them from learning from us. Or how about <clears throat> Americans learn more STEM? Yep. That oh, wait, that's impossible. Well, that takes us to point number three, Andrew. Somebody said STEM spots should be reserved for locally born Americans. But other people said, listen, guys, if you reserve it to locally born Americans, it'll still just be Chinese Americans and Indian Americans that have been naturalized. Because even the American Americanized Indians and Chinese don't study STEM as hardcore as the immigrant ones. Right, right, right. Right. So Basically, somebody was saying, isn't it really America's fault because all the kids just want to be influencers and just get the easiest way to have a fun life and make money because nobody wants to be in a fab or a pre... You know what I mean? Like, nobody wants to do hardcore work work. Ah! Uh, somebody said, why do we fight so many foreign wars and fund so many of them? If we didn't fund them, we could take that money and make STEM free study for local U.S. citizens. Mm. Yeah, there's a lot of redistribution of resources that could take place. That's not a bad idea. You mean, David, kind of give people a special scholarship for STEM. Right. Point number four, Andrew. Somebody just said, yep. Well, basically, Americans, when they're saying American kids don't study STEM anymore. They're mostly talking about heritage, white and black people in America. And somebody was saying, yeah, it just seems like most heritage, white and black people, by the way, not my words, just want to work in sports, entertainment, military, or get some cushy, easy job. Mm. Um, so yeah, here's the thing. Like, I was watching the NBA championship, right? And when the Boston Celtics won the NBA championship this year, all the... There's like 50 people on stage celebrating for the Celtics organization, Andrew. It was all just white and black people that were really tall. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, there was no like Asians or Latinos on stage. So, or, or Indians, for example. You know what I mean? So I'm like, that's why you need the immigrants because they kind of do like, I guess the jobs that are 
not as considered as cool or glamorous to the American pop culture. Exactly, exactly. Right. They don't want to be actors and stuff. They're studying for the Gao Kao, and then the Gao Kao studying leads to grad school in hard subjects. There's just a pretty easy transition. Point number six, Andrew. The U.S. is a capitalist country. Educational institutions are there to make money and create good research Aren't we just hampering the institutions because they can't get the money from the students and the students do good research, so you're hurting the institutions at a fundamental basis from two angles? Oh, looks like there's competing incentives, guys. Uh, yeah, because obviously a lot of college rankings by U.S. News, when they rank colleges, is actually heavily based on the research that that college puts out. Someone like the University of Washington, our alma mater, it was not really considered a top 10 university when we were there, but now in today, 2024, it ranked as top 10 because of its research. Well, because and, of a lot of Chinese nerds too. Yeah, Indian and, and, nerds too. and Indian nerds too, but just nerds in general. I wanna say nerds from other countries. Immigrant nerds, okay, that's what I mean. Immigrant nerds, whether they're, whatever the Asian or non-Asian makeup, it's immigrant nerds that are boosting the college rankings. Therefore, the college has better rankings. They can charge more money. They can make more money. So obviously, colleges want bright minds. Colleges are not as concerned with like, whoa, is it our job to be like Homeland Security and right. make sure these students are not gonna share some stuff with some guy over WeChat? Is that our job? Whose job is it? Right. Somebody compared this to trying to, the early, when the NBA used to be all white, them preventing black players from getting in, or like uh, the Emma, uh, the NHL preventing Russian players from getting in. Right. Because they're, they're like, well, what if they take the NHL skills and take it back to Russia? Dude, I'm saying the STEM is just the NBA for Chinese people. Right. Um, other people are saying this is going to backfire similar to the microchip situation because if you ban them, it's going to force China to boost its domestic universities to be be a more self-contained ecosystem. Sort of like shutting, shutting off China from the international microchip ecosystem force them to create an internal ecosystem. Right, right, right. Uh, point number seven, somebody said, just keep the Chinese out, man. They are faithful to their own country. However, uh, I don't know if I trust the Indians either because then America is going to become like Canada because obviously there's a joke right now that Canada is becoming very Indian. That's funny. Right. Like I said, oh. these are just the internet comments. These are real thoughts that people have though. And they're, you know, um, point number eight, people were talking about even within Asians, there's a lot of arguing back and forth. Andrew, in the next shark comment section, uh, Taiwan, Hong Kong weighing in. A lot of people, even within the Asian world, for different reasons, might feel a type of way about Chinese students from the mainland. Yeah, you mean not all, just because you are of the Asian phenotype, do you support all other Asians? I mean, I get it that, listen, if people want to say it's an America first thing, Sure, but let me tell you this. It's going to be hard to execute, and it's going to be quite discriminatory. So I'm just letting you guys know. Uh, and our last point, Andrew, people were saying that this really goes back to the Chinese Exclusion Act from the 1950s all mm -hmm. over again. Because if they exclude Chinese specifically from studying STEM, and they have the Chinese Exclusion Act, that'll be two times that the Anglo-Western world went against Chinese specifically and no other Asians. Yeah, it's... It doesn't set a good precedent, um, but I will say this, and you know, I read a lot of the comments, and obviously, we, I know, Chinese students that are in STEM. Uh, Andrew, My father, Andrew, you worked, you intern in a fab. I, I worked at a at a at a lab at the University of Washington for a summer, as my sister is an engineer, high level engineer, right? So. Uh, our sister. I, and then I was just like, I guess my overall takeaways, and I'm trying to put like my American hat on. Obviously, I, I'm American. I care about America. I do want to keep America safe. Uh, but it's just like these undergrad and grad students are, are like, unless they're working on some sensitive stuff and like maybe you just need to parse out and label what's very sensitive and security-based stuff. And maybe if that's up to you guys to keep... Chinese students who are not naturalized as American citizens yet off of those projects, okay. But I do not think you want to stop them from studying STEM because they can ultimately end up contributing. A lot of them end up contributing to American companies. Um, obviously, some of them go back to China as well. And, and if you limit China, you know, you, you definitely got to limit the security concerns of, I don't want to have to call out other people, but Russians and Iranians, you know, those are not the friendliest places to America right now. Um, well, they arguably do way more stuff than yes, China. Does. Yes, Actually, yeah. to be honest, 
they're like actual <laughs> physical wars with America. So that's why it's crazy to me because I'm like, listen, guys, I'm not saying it's not a competitive rival. I'm not saying that. But we got to talk about levels of extent yeah. here. No, I just want to ask people what has China specifically done that is super dangerous other than compete against America. They compete against America. There has been some sharing of information. I'm not going to lie, but America takes information from China, whatever. Everybody does it. But obviously from an American standpoint, we don't want too much information leaving America, Now we'll right? take the nerds and the women, right. but well, I don't right. want a reverse flow of information exactly. back over to the East. And that goes to my next point is saying that we only want Chinese students who study the humanities. To me, is almost just like saying, hey, we just need more Chinese women here these fellas these super nerdy fellas that want to study nuclear physics and stuff we don't need them give us the people who want to study psychology philosophy humanities social studies plays which are probably mostly women yeah honestly i think that i could see potentially in in, in some fields like signing people to contracts all right you're gonna need to sign on a contract to come work for the u.s for like x amount of years like a year or two years or like just potentially some additional programs of mm. verification. I could see that being logical, but an outright ban, that seems way overdone. Well, what else, David, do you think? Like, are there any possible solutions to this or compromises that, that make Americans feel secure enough but not being over? Because at the end of the day, guys, listen, you need STEM people. And if only the STEM yeah. people are coming from India or China and America doesn't want to produce them themselves. It is what it is. Yeah, I mean, this is a very complicated sort of like situation and a lot of people commenting on it just really don't understand. You have to understand there is a global view. There's a Western Anglo view when you're part of the Anglosphere. There's an internal Asian American view and then there's an Asian Asian perspective on this. And it's just like, uh, there's a lot of different incentives and stuff like that. I think basically, man, if people could just decide on um, additional like checkpoints or additional filtration systems, everything should be okay. Mm -hmm. Like, you know what I mean? Or if maybe you incentivize people to really stay on or lock them into like long-term commercial contracts, even before the research starts, that could make sense as well. Yeah. You know what? All these, Dave, I got an idea. So all these non-STEM studying American students, you know what they could do for their country? Dave, you want to know? I got a, I got an interesting solution. This is my message to all those American students who don't want to study STEM, who refuse to study STEM, but care about America. Guess what? What? They could outreach more to these STEM Chinese students and make them more Americanized. Be nicer to them. Mm. Be cooler to them. Invite them out. Help Americanize them so they're, they become and contribute to America. That's some old school thinking. That's what they used to do back in the 70s and 60s, bro. When these Asian immigrants would come over or any immigrant would come over, there would be like your old, ta your family that'd be like, oh yeah, well, you know, we'll have a, invite these Chinese students for dinner and we'll we'll cook right. them and we'll engage them because it's good to be American and have them be part well, of America. Or you with the homestays and stuff like that. Yeah. Right? and like Or that, even the whole plot of that movie 21. Yeah. And you want to talk about being a good American. That's what the good Americans were doing decades ago. Now, maybe they don't do that as much anymore, but- I'm just saying, like, if you, like, there is some part on other Americans to help do this. That's part of the American way, is it not? Am I wrong? Am I wrong for this? But are you actually suggesting that it's on, like, the citizens and not just the infrastructure? No, no, it's on both. But the citizens got something to do with it, too. They could be help American. Just like this, as any immigrant kid or immigrant themselves, if you didn't meet some good American families on your way here that made it a lot easier. That's why a lot of them have such positive relationships with Americans or like love America is because you just, you met good Americans when you got here. So like be that good American that they meet. Yeah. Anyway, guys, big topic. Let us know what you guys think in the comments section below. I'm sure there's going to be a range of opinions. Keep it civil until next time. We the hop hop boys. We out. Peace. Peace.